Welcome to the um, System of Linear Equations um, word problem lesson. Um, so again, word problem usually intimidates people and they go, oh, I'm horrible at these and so forth. So um, I, I developed a lesson here where we can kind of go step by step t uh, tackling these questions and then we're going to spend the next few days um, getting better and better at them. You actually already know how to do the end of the word problem already. Uh, you picked up some skills already where if you're trying to solve a linear system, you know how to graph to find it. Um, you know, by finding the point of intersection of two lines, you know how to use substitution method. And the most recent one that you learned is the elimination method. So you actually do know how, like once you get the equations, how to go through and find the answer. Um, but Building and starting the equation, getting it into the equation, um, sorry, the linear system, getting them into the equation form is a bit tricky, but uh, again, we're going to go through step by step, and by the end, you should be um, fantastic at these that you can keep kind of applying them in uh, future problems that you see. Okay, so um, I have the, you know, the learning goals here, um, if you're just kind of a good idea of what we're going to be covering. Um, so uh, again, you know, the main things are we're going to, uh, you know, analyze the word problem. Uh, so it might be a paragraph or a few sentences uh, describing what's the scenario. Uh, you're going to figure out, figure out what's the unknown, what is it that you have to find by setting up variables. You're going to write the equation. You're going to solve the linear system. You're going to write your final statement um, with um, the proper, uh, you know, X and Y form, format for the answer, okay? Um, all right, so a system, right? So this is we call it a system of linear equations because we have more than one line that we have to take into account when we're trying to find the answer. Okay, uh, we're going to start with defining variables. So basically, you're going to read through the question and it'll uh, be asking you to find something. So that'll be the variable. So you're going to uh, create a let statement. So let x be uh, this, so let x be that. So um, what you're going to find is that you're going to have to find, you know, the number of weeks, the number of seconds, or the number of coins that you might have, um, uh, you know, what distance you went, and so forth. Okay, so um, again, we're going to start with that. That could be the trickiest part, and then whenever we can, we always write units. All right, and then from there, once we have our variable set up, we're going to use those and create equations and write the x and y values into these equations. So since we are looking at linear equations, we're always going to have the x and the y value in most cases, okay? Uh, and then um, once we create them, then from here you're also at these, okay? Because you've been practicing these for, uh, you know, for several cycles now. Um, and um, so now, yeah, you can tackle these. We just got to get the, the question and the equations set up. Um, and um, again, right from the beginning, I've also taught you, you know how to check any of these systems. Once you get an answer, you know how to go back in, plug it back in, check the left side versus right side, make sure, making sure that they're equal. And if um, and they have to be the um, checked in both equations, and if it works, then you know it's the answer. Um, and if it doesn't work, then something went wrong, you have to go back and kind of fix your work, okay? Um, so again, it's not something I'm marking for still, but you, um, it's a skill that you should do um, so that you can double check and make sure you um, did everything correctly. All right, uh, the final statement. Um, so I, I know I've been drilling into you guys, right? The solution to the system is five comma two with brackets, right? So that's what we did before when it was just a general equation. We didn't know what the equation represented and so forth. But now since we're gonna have word problems, uh, you're going to be building equations based on, you know, the speed of something, uh, how many coins you have, or how much it costs uh, a company for something. So you need to, um, when you get an answer like, you know, bracket 25, 12, you need to be saying things like, oh, uh, that means, uh, you know, like the, the first number was the number of adult tickets, the second was um, the number of kid tickets. So you have to be making a statement now that's specific to the word problem. So therefore, there are 25 adult tickets sold and 12 uh, child tickets sold. Okay, so just that's the new part to the ending, I guess. So just kind of be aware of that. But anyway, we'll get there. Um, we're just going to start off with um, building our variables. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, just building um, just one equation, uh, and then we'll move into building two equations. So this is kind of something more uh, like what you did last year. Um, so you're going to analyze the problem here. So number one, um, two numbers total nine. Okay, 
Um, so we don't have enough information here to solve the answer, but we should be able to set up some sort of equation, okay? All right, so uh, you're looking for the things that you need to find, okay? So there's two numbers that total nine. So um, what we need here is um, uh, to write down, okay, so we have to find a uh, first number and a second number. So we're gonna add these to the table. So um, I've got this set up so that you can kind of um, um, jot down your thinking and analyze kind of what information you have, and then you can translate it into the variable statement in the equation uh, area here, okay? Um, so again, the way we use these boxes will be um, different from question to question, but I hopefully it kind of organizes your thoughts and um, helps you build the equations, okay? All right, um, so we have two numbers, so I usually just kind of jot down, all right, so I have a first number and I have another number, so we'll call it the, the second number. Okay, uh, then from there, um, we need to, we don't know what they are, they're unknowns, so we assign them a variable. Um, I just like to use X and Y. So the first number is X, the second number is Y. So at this point, if you wanted to go and write your variable statement, so let X be the first number. Okay, so make sure you write first number. Don't just write first and second, okay, because it's too big. All right, but I'm okay if you write um, the number sign for number. Okay, uh, just kind of listen to what your teacher says next year if they want the whole word uh, written out, okay? All right, um, so the two numbers total nine. So uh, when you're looking at the statement up here now, so you want to um, think about, okay, so what does total mean and so forth? So you are going through and you're thinking, okay, totaling up, okay? So that means like adding, right? And then uh, totals nine, so in a way it equals nine. So hopefully you can kind of um, understand that you're taking a couple numbers, totaling them, so that means adding them, and they're making nine, okay? So in that case there, um, if you wanted to kind of go back to your box here and go, oh, okay, well, I have X, so that's my first, um, Y, that's my second, and they total nine, so you can kind of make a little, oh, those will add to nine, okay? All right, so then you write your equation. So the equation that represents this problem is X plus Y equals nine, all right? And uh, so that's kind of just warming up to what we're getting to today. All right, let's try uh, another one. Uh, number two, so twice the smaller number equals the larger number. Okay, so again, you think and step back. Sometimes the problem will say, go and find these things. Sometimes it won't. So you just kind of analyze and go, okay, well, there's a couple things it's talking about and we don't know what they are, so it would be good to find them. Okay, so uh, in this case here, uh, it's actually telling us um, uh, kind of some more information about, like there's a couple numbers and we know a little bit more information, like there's a smaller one, a smaller number, and there's a larger number. Okay, so again, we need to find them, so we're just going to set them, uh, set a variable to represent them, like that. Okay, so if we go through here and write our variable statement, so let x equal the smaller number, and y is the larger number. Okay, so uh, once we get the variable st statement set up, we're going to look at the uh, the. Uh, the <clears throat> the description here and uh, try to translate it into a math equation. Okay, so I uh, really this lesson is like uh, not just a word problem lesson, it's like a translating from uh, a sentence into math uh, equations, math language. Okay, so twice, what does that mean? So if you have uh, twice as many things, um, so you're trying to think what math operation, so you know it's a two, what math operation is it when you have twice? Um, so that means two times. So if you want to write like that, two times, okay? Um, equals, okay, you know the math symbol is equal, like that. Uh, the larger number, okay? So if you wanted to start kind of writing the letters above the expressions here. All right, so what we're doing here, so I guess writing this times here isn't good, so I'll just write a dot, two times. Okay, um, so we have the letter X for the small number, Y for the large number. So two times the smaller number number is equal to the larger. Okay, two times the smaller number is equal to the larger. So if the larger number is 10, right, two times what would make 10? Well, two times five would make 10. So sometimes if you want to fill in a number to make it make sense, that, that's a good strategy to use as well. So right now we're finding that two times the smaller number, okay, is equal to the larger number. Okay, so that's how you can kind of use the table just to organize your thoughts. And then you're like, oh, okay, I've got the equation here, two times... 
of uh, x equals y. So again, um, I recommend that you try plugging some numbers in to make sure it makes sense. So for example, if I have x is equal to, I don't know, like 5, like I said, right? If, I, if it's equal to 5, so the first number is equal to 5. So if I put it into the equation, 2 times 5 equals 10. So then y is equal to 10. Okay, so then you're checking, all right, is x the smaller number? Yeah. Is y the large number? Yes. And then um, is 2 times the smaller number equal to the larger? Yes, it is. Okay, so um, that's kind of something you can do too to make sure that you are uh, getting to the right equation to actually plug some numbers in that will make sense, okay? Um, and um, again, I know some of the word problems today, you're, you could probably guess the answer, but I want you to show me the work because it's the process here that I'm looking for. All right, um, okay, let's move to number three. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Um, so the number three is more like kind of in line with what we're going to be doing today, uh, where we're going to be working with uh, money um, and building equations with uh, things like co the cost of tickets or how many coins or bills we have um, available. Okay, so but we're still going to keep it simple and start with just like it's just a one equation type um, question built here. All right, so we're going to go through. There's twelve dollars and sixty cents in a piggy bank. Um, it's filled with nickels and dimes. Um, uh, what equation would represent the combination of coins in the piggy bank? Okay, so I want one. So when we're saying combination of coins here, um, I'm not talking about the. So I'm not talking about how much like money we have. I'm talking about. So right here, um, we're talking about. Um, like literally they want you to tell us um, how many actual nickels like five five nickels six nickels or how many dimes like 10 dimes 12 dimes are actually in this piggy bank okay so I don't want to know how much money in nickels how much money in dimes I want to know how many of each of these uh, nickels and dimes are there okay but the clue is it is a money amount so it's um so you gotta kind of problem solve them there. So before we start, I just want to go over um, when we're looking at um, money. Um, so if uh, you have a nickel or a dime or a quarter, um, so in general, like you're used to kind of thinking them as uh, cents, right? It's five cents, uh, ten cents, twenty-five cents, etc. And um, so, like if we had like a loony. I guess we don't we don't call it a hundred cents. We usually say a dollar and so forth, right? So anyway, um, so what what I want to do here is just kind of get you thinking about um, all of the money um, uh, in uh, dollars. So uh, so we know that yeah, like a loony is a dollar. We know a toonie is two dollars, and then you know if you have a five dollar bill, okay, so. It's five dollars, etc. Right? So, um, uh, so from here, I want you to look at nickels and how would you write nickels um, as a, a as in dollars? Okay. So uh, I want you to think of it as like taking five and dividing by a hundred. Okay. So uh, whenever we're talking about nickels, uh, we're going to uh, talk talk about them as 0 0.05. Okay, and dimes will be 0 0.10, and quarters will be 0.25. Okay, so we want to always be thinking in di uh, dollars because uh, the clues you'll find um, will be all in dollars. Okay, so um, so if uh, if you had um, two nickels, you would go five times two, so I have ten cents. But if you're in dollars here, you would go 0 0.05 times two, and then you would write point one. Okay, so just keep in mind if um, you're building an equation where you have to calculate how much money you have. So you would write 0 0.05 like this, and then say we don't know how many nickels we have, so we would write x, right? So you would so if you had uh, 10, so if x was 10 like that, so you had 10 nickels on you. How many nickels do you have? then you would multiply it by 0 0.05 and then you would say, oh, I have, you know, you have 50 cents worth, right? But you would write 0 0.50 dollars. Okay, so uh, same thing if you had like 20, you would multiply it by 10 and then you'd say, oh, I have a dollar 
worth of nickels. So, so just keep that in mind that you should always be, uh, when you need to convert things to how much money you have, uh, then you would, you would write it like that. Okay, so quarters. Uh, and then if you have loonies, uh, literally you're just taking the one dollar multiplying by the x. So if you have five loonies, five times one is five dollars. Okay, but you know in math we don't write in the one, so we would just write x. Okay, um, if it's toonies, so you're always taking two dollars times however many you have. So if I have, I don't know, four loonies, then I go two times four is eight dollars. Okay, and then five times x and so forth. Okay, and if it's ten dollars, ten x, twenty dollars, twenty x, and so forth. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone over that, just kind of use that going forward uh, with these money questions. Okay, all right, so. Uh, we have a piggy bank and it's filled with nickels and dimes and then the last part of the question is saying what combination of the coins are in the piggy bank so i want to know how many nickels and how many dimes there are so go ahead and write that into your box here these are the two things that you have to find nickels and you have to find dimes and again if you prefer that to use the letter n and d for the variables that's totally fine um, i'm just going to use x and y Okay, um, so x will represent, so let's write in our variable let statement here. So let x be the, and don't just write nickels, okay? It's the number of nickels. Okay, and y uh, will be the number of dimes. Okay, so you have to write the number of, and then actually write out nickels. Don't just write the number of n, the number of d. Um, Okay, so just uh, when you're heading an assessment, make sure always write it in full. If you're just doing it for homework, it's a different thing. But All right, um, and I always want you to, even with the ones above here, uh, be writing units if it's possible. So in this case here, these two here, they were just about numbers. There were no units. They were just numbers. So, And then here, I'm, um, I want you, I'm wanting you to find the number of dimes and nickels. Say the same thing. It's just kind of a quantity, so um, there are no uh, units like centimeters or seconds or... Um, dollars and stuff like that like I know we're dealing with money here but I don't want to know actually how much money I just want to know the number of coins that you have so no units here okay all right um, so now we're gonna build our equation so we have um, this one clue here that um, all the money so we don't know how many nickels we have but when you put them all together and you put all the dimes together um, you're gonna add to twelve dollars and sixty cents so how do I figure out uh, an expression to represent how much money I have in nickels? Okay, so like I said down here, you're going to write, so whenever you have to figure out how, ma how much nickels you have, you're going to multiply by the, you know, the five cents, but you write it as a dollar point oh five x like that. Okay, and for dimes, same thing, point one zero because it's dimes, but then y represents the number of dimes. Okay, so I know I used x down here, but depending on what your variable letter is, you're going to multiply your letter by the, the money amount here. Okay, so we have nickels 0.05, dimes 0.1. All right, and all together, when we add these together, these amounts together, you will get $12.60 like that. Okay, so that's what you're doing uh, a lot today. So just kind of get comfortable with figuring out the coins and the money amounts and so forth. So uh, now you're going to write the equation. All right, and um, so the one thing I wanted to point out when I'm finished here is that I don't write the units. Okay, so if you're wondering what I'm talking about, see how this has units here, dollar sign? Um, so you're not going to write that uh, in your equation. So we don't write centimeters, we don't write seconds, we don't write dollar signs into our equations. Okay, so just drop all the units and then you just have the equation like that. All right, so that's what we're doing today. We're just gonna have to build two um, um, at a time, but we're I'm gonna have a couple variables like this. Okay, so, um, so just kinda if you wanna go back over, stop the video and go back over what we just did, and then we can move on to the new stuff. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna move on to uh, similar type questions with money and coins and so forth, um, but now we're gonna have a couple uh, different factors uh, being described that so you have to build a couple different equations, but you're still kind of setting up the variables the same way. Okay, so uh, the first one, I'm going to call it the, the ticket type example. 
So we're going to have uh, a school play being set, uh, put on here. And um, it's giving you some information like, okay, well, the adult tickets cost $6, the student tickets cost 4 um, 750 people are attending the play. The total receipts that it says here, it just means that they made all together uh, $3,890. So in the end, um, how many adults were in the audience is what it's asking, okay? Um, so sometimes the question will ask you for a couple things. Sometimes it'll just be one, but kind of still go through the question, trying to find everything that you could, you could find. So in here, um, we, they need to know the number of adult, uh, that were adults that were in the audience, but let's also look for how many students so we can kind of build this, uh, uh, problem together. Okay. So, uh, the first thing here is we have adults. Okay. So the number of adults. And then we have students as well. Okay, so again, decide on what letters you want to use that you feel more comfortable with and go from there. So again, I'm just going to write X and Y. You can use A and S, uh, whatever you want there. Okay, so let's make our let statements. So the variables that I'm using, so I want to let people know that I'm representing the uh, X with the number of adults the number of adults attending or the number of adult tickets sold, etc. Okay, um, so I'll just write tickets sold. But you can also uh, represent it as the number of adults attending, which is the same thing. Okay, uh, Y is the number of student tickets. Okay, and then I'm just doing a check. Can I write a, a unit? Okay, so since this is the number of things, uh, it's a quantity, we don't need to write units, so no units, okay? But if you need to write units, you need to write um, bracket, like dollar sign, centimeters and meters, hours, right here. Okay, um, so then from there, let's kind of go through, and um, we have a couple, uh, you know, we have things about the cost of things. So the adult tickets cost $6, student cost $4. Um, so we can kind of start putting that amount together, so we can kind of call, call, call it the cost I guess, area here. So we're looking at adult tickets. Well, if I sell one ticket, it costs six. If I sell five tickets, well, then, then I'm going to make $30, right? So you're taking the $6 and you're multiplying it by X. So that's how you're going to figure out how much um, the cost or the, you know, we can even call this the total, okay? Um, so from there, um, we have the student which is four dollars so four times y okay so all together if we were to um uh, again look at the receipts the total that was made um or the total that it costs it'll be six x uh together with the four x totals how much money did it cost is it 700 people or is it this amount of money yes so that there okay so this is going to be represented by eight three thousand eight hundred and ninety so that will be the equation uh, for uh, just the money that was involved in this play. All right, um, there is another scenario uh, a part here to this problem though. Um, we also have that we know that there are 750 people attending this play. So uh, we need to use that as well. So back here when we did the X plus Y, okay, we know, or sorry, X and Y, we know that X is the number of adults that showed up, Y is the number of students that showed up. So altogether, if we know 750 showed up, we can say, oh, well, if I take X and Y and add them up, I'll get 750. All right, so this is like the number of people, and this has to do with like the amount of money uh, involved in this play, okay? So now we have a couple equations that we can present. So X plus Y, equals 750 and then 6x plus 4y equals 3890. Okay, so we have a couple equations here um, and uh, from there our next step would be to go and actually solve the problem and figure out x and y, uh, but we're not going to do that here. We're just going to stop because right now this is a tough part um, to, to these problems. So um, <clears throat> I'm generating a, a several different videos over the week so that you can kind of practice specific ones. So if you feel like, okay, I get these ticket ones and you practice them and they're good, you can do the checkpoint and then you can try uh, the next days uh, early if you want, okay? All right, um, so let's move on to the next one, example two. 
Okay, so we have 296 tickets sold at Athletic, athletic Banquet. Okay, so the adult tickets are 10 bucks, uh, the student tickets are five, um, the, the receipts. Okay, so the total that was generated or made was 1,910. How many um, adult tickets, okay, and how many student tickets were sold? Okay, so here in this question, it's asking you for both things. I know back here we did, it only asked for the adults, but I want you to go and set it up so you have to find um, both of them. Um, and then it, when in the end, when you actually solve it, you're there for a statement can say, oh, uh, I found that the number of adults tickets was this, okay? And you don't have to talk about the students. Okay, so here, so again, <clears throat> we know there's adults. Now we know there's students. Okay, and again, pick letters that you like, X and Y, okay? So again, this is the total, you know, number of people showing up to things. So if we're scanning around here, we're noticing, okay, if X represents all the adults that are going to this banquet, Y represents all the students, well, we know in general, it all, all together, <clears throat> 296 tickets were sold. So we're gonna write, we'll add these two up and uh, make 296, okay? Oh, okay, let's go actually get our variables written out here. All right, so X is the number of adults. Okay, so this is important when you are um, uh, setting up uh, word problems and equations uh, in this course and in future courses, you always have to specify, if you're using some letter, you need to tell the reader what the letter, letter represents, okay, to get full marks. So a uh, number of adult tickets, okay, so, or again, you can just write the number of adults going to the banquet, okay, whatever, those both work. And number of student tickets. Okay, all right, uh, so from there, so we got our one equation built, but I'll write it in a second. Um, so let's go to the, uh, this is like the money amount, okay? So last time I called it cost, but you can think of it as receipts because it keeps using the word receipts, okay? So what did you receive? Uh, what did, so say the uh, Athletic Association is trying to, you know, uh, accumulate money so they can pay for the food and the awards and so forth, okay? So we have $10 for the adults, so you're gonna write Okay, so if I have one adult show up, it's $10, $10 that they'll make. Um, but if I have, uh, you know, five adults show up, then I'll make $50. Um, so what, we're going to use this expression to calculate out how much adults uh, it'll, they'll, they'll make from adult tickets. All right, and the students will be $5. Oops, but you write 5Y because Y is for students. And then um, altogether, it said that they made 1910 So you're adding that up. Okay, so again, um, it, if you feel like oh, you got this, you don't need to use the box. Definitely you don't need to, you know, be filling in this box. I'm not going to mark it. It's just kind of your work area um, just to kind of organize your thoughts and then kind of go over in here and present your, your equations. Okay, um, so again, when you're first starting off, this is really helpful by uh, kind of organizing all the information that you have and um, getting it, um, the equations built. But uh, once you get really good at these, you'll find, oh, yeah, this is easy. I could just kind of build the equation, and, and then that's what I would like you to actually do, okay? All right, <clears throat> so uh, there are the two equations, and again, we will solve those eventually. Uh, we just want to get this far today. All right, so that uh, those were the, the ticket type examples. So we have some money involved, dollars involved, and so forth. But now we're going to move to uh, ones where... They have coins and uh, and so forth. Okay, all right. So uh, we have a coffee machine here. It has a dollar twenty-five uh, in uh, nickels and quarters. So it has a uh, like if we added up money amounts of the quarters and nickels, it adds up to a dollar twenty-five. Okay, but then we also have some other information here, so that if there are nine coins, how many of each type are there? Okay, so we also know how many of the coins there are. So hopefully you're seeing kind of the um, similar, uh, it's a similar question to these ticket, ticket ones as well. But um, again, when it's dollars, it's easy to kind of write out the expression. But when it's coins, just remember, uh, don't write 5 times x, but write 0 0.05 times x. Okay, so divide the cents by 100 and then write the decimal form for the, for the uh, money values. Okay, all right, whoops. So Okay, so let's go through here. Uh, so we have a couple things, quarters and nickels. 
So again, it doesn't matter if you wrote nickels first or quarters first, it'll come out the same uh, in the end when you actually solve your uh, problem here. And again, if you want to use Q and N, that's fine. I'm just going to use X and Y. All right, so, uh, so hopefully you're starting to see that, okay, there's always a money amount and there's always a number of items amount, okay? So uh, you can start building your equations, but don't forget, um, you get marks for your variable statement. So you're telling me if you're gonna use the letter Q, what does Q represent? What does X represent? So in this case here, it's the number of quarters. Don't just write X equals quarters, because I need to know what about the quarters are you talking about? So you need to write the number of quarters. Y is the number of nickels. Okay, and again, uh, I want you to pay attention, should it have units? Well, this is the number of things, so no. All right, so uh, we have our, you know, our money amount here, okay? Um, so um, we have $1.25, so the quarters, if you were trying to figure out how much in quarters, how much money in quarters we'd have, we would take 25 cents or $0.25 times it by how many quarters we would have. And then for nickels, you use 0 0.05 times y, and then add them together, you get $1.25 here, okay? And uh, the other condition here is if there are nine coins, how many of each type are there? So we know all together, they add up to nine coins. So those are the two equations, and it doesn't matter which order you write the equations. Okay, so you could write it that one first, and then this one second, or this one could have been first. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> this one is second, okay? All right, um, so yeah, there we go. Let's do one more and hopefully you're feeling um, confident that you can try some today. All right, so uh, here's Susan. So she's got some quarters and nickels. Again, so just to let you know, this left side here, this box, it's just to really organize your thoughts. Um, it's not something I'm gonna expect that you have to do uh, to get marks, okay? Um, I want the stuff on the right side to uh, be clearly shown uh, to get full marks. All right, um, the number of quarters. Uh, so we have, um, so yeah, X is going to be the number of quarters. And Y will be the number of nickels. Okay, so um, we have $4.35, so you know that you have this total here. So how do we get to that total? We're gonna multiply 0.25x and we're gonna multiply 0.05y. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna add those together and it should come out to $4.35. So that's our first equation. All right, so the next one's a little bit tricky because it's kind of sounds almost like a riddle here. The number of quarters is five less than three times the number of nickels. Okay, so I'm um, just gonna give you some space here to write above the question. All right, so the number of quarters is, oh, that didn't work. Okay, so the number of quarters is, um, so you're looking in here, the number of quarters, so that you know this part here is, uh, X, okay, is five less. So whenever you see that five less, it means subtract five, okay? Then three times, so three times means, you know, three multiply uh, by the number of nickels, okay? So this is one where you're gonna have to build it and then kind of think, okay, does that make sense? Does that make sense? So uh, you can do it down here if you want. So you're gonna go, all right, so there's three times the nickels, okay? So the number of quarters, number of quarters is, so again, is, is, um, is like the equal sign. Okay, so number of quarters, so if it helps, maybe we can write it in words. The number of quarters is five less than three times the number of nickels. Okay, so I know you're seeing five less first, so you're thinking you have to write it, but it's like five less than the three times the nickels. So three times the nickels is part of the expression here, but it's the quarters are five less than three times the nickels. So you would write the five after, subtract five like that. Okay, so the number of quarters is um, th uh, three times the number of nickels. 
okay, of five less than three times the number of nickels. So in this case here, to get the quarters, you are taking three uh, y subtract five gets you the quarters here. Okay, all right, so let's write those out. X plus y, um, oops, we don't have that expression here. We have the money amount, 0.25x plus 0.05y equals $4.35. And then we have um, three, so three times the nickels, five less is what the quarters will make. Okay, so if you wrote it this way, that's fine too. Okay. All right, so those are the two uh, equations. You have two variable statements, and um, yeah, so from there, um, it's a little bit trickier just because it almost seems like no one talks like this, I know, but just kind of translate it out and uh, write the expression out, okay?